Now, I'm sure there's a lot of you that absolutely love the Yuuzhan Vong. They appeared back in the 90s and the early 2000s in a series of novels known as the New Jedi Order. They were essentially the big bad. They played the role of the big villain in the Star Wars universe about 20 years or so after the movies. And the Vong themselves went on to be extremely well-written and complex villains in their own rights. And the books also became very, very popular, selling millions of copies. But if you've been a fan of this channel for any period of time, you'll probably know that I don't really delve too much into the lore post Return of the Jedi. And that's simply because it really isn't a very strong area for me. I never truly got on with this era of Star Wars despite its general popularity in the fandom. As more people tended to go forward with Star Wars, I found myself going back and being more interested in its history. But I know there's a lot of you in my comment sections asking me to cover this kind of stuff and cover that juicy lore post Return of the Jedi, but truthfully I just don't have a complex level of knowledge that I feel would make for good content in regards to these specific stories and era. Maybe one day I'll get there, but for now the history of Star Wars is kind of where I'll stay. But in this video I get to kind of blend the two, because how many of you knew that the Yuuzhan Vong had a secret little reference in Knights of the Old Republic 1? I'm sure many of you, like myself, just kind of had this go over their heads when you actually listen to it in the game, and I'm sure there's also a lot of you that never had this discussion with a certain character to learn about it in the first place. And that's because it's not entirely obvious. If you have a conversation with Kandorus Ordo about his war stories, this is where you will learn about it. Kandorus himself actually encounters the Yuuzhan Vong, or at least a part of them. Now, usually in these kind of videos, I'll just talk about it and give you a brief description, but I think it's easier if I just played the entire dialogue conversation between Revan and Kandorus. So here it is. You want another war story, huh? You want to hear about some other world getting wasted, eh? I knew you were the type. Your stagnant republic has never seen some of the strange creatures and races we fought on the Outer Rim in those years. <laughs> and you never will now. If a world isn't strong enough to defend itself, it's basically forfeit. But this story is about something a little different. We were going through the asteroid fields of the Crispin system at the very edge of the galaxy, playing with the pirates and smugglers we found there. The main belt in the Crispin system consists of mainly small rocks covered in frozen methane gas shells, and the pirates were using them for cover. Ha! <laughs> I remember using a thermal generator to cause the outer layer of one of the asteroids to vaporize in a picosecond. It blew out and shredded the three smugglers using it for cover. But that was a mistake. The asteroid I had targeted was smaller than most, maybe a dozen meters on a side. On the outside, it looked the same as any other. Just a ball covered in frozen gas. But something must have been inside it. Something inactive in the cold. The heat of my blast might have triggered something, or woken something up. After I'd hit it, spots of light and heat appeared all over the thin shell, still covering it, evaporating the gases. What lay underneath looked like some sort of rocky growth. A deformed rock, pitted by scores of micrometeorite scars. I think something even older might have been inside that. Maybe, but maybe not. It started rotating faster and faster as we watched it. After a second, it started spraying fire, thermal projectiles that melted our armor like wax. We were caught completely by surprise. Before we could counterattack, it fled at an incredible speed. We couldn't catch it, but we could follow its hyperspace wake. We followed its trail as far as we could, heading away from the galactic core. When it finally led beyond the edge of our galaxy, we abandoned our efforts. Anything that wants to commit suicide in that great void is not worth our trouble trying to catch. Uh, that's the only story I have for now. So there we have it. That is Kandorus Ordo talking about his interaction with the Yuuzhan Vong while he was chasing pirates during the Mandalorian Wars. And the thing he is talking about here is what is known as a Yurik Strona, or at least that's what we can kind of narrow it down to. These were scouting vessels used by the Yuuzhan Vong that were sent out to essentially gather information, and they were very good at hiding. As Kandorus alludes to in the dialogue, the Yorick Strona was grown and actually looked like an asteroid, which meant it could go completely undetected almost entirely when you don't know what you're looking for. 
Candorus was extremely lucky to come across this Yu Zhangbong scout ship, as when he was chasing the pirates, they tried to hide behind what they thought was an asteroid, and when they intervened, it essentially alerted the Yu Zhangbong inside. He also goes on to mention that this ship fired plasma that melted Mandalorian iron, otherwise known as Beskar, and as we all know, Mandalorian iron is close to being indestructible. And this came from a weapon that was on Yu Zanvong's ships known as Yarrick Core, which were basically plasma cannons, very powerful, and even by the time of the New Jedi Order books, these plasma cannons could melt entire Republic vessels. But Candorus's interaction with the Yorick Strona is actually a little bit awkward when it comes to the timing of things in Star Wars. It creates a possible continuity error with the Yuuzhan Vong appearing 4,000 years before they actually appeared in future Star Wars stories. Certain things do crop up here and there throughout Star Wars history that are ultimately related to the Yuuzhan Vong. However, a scout ship being in the Mandalorian Wars doesn't entirely make sense. You see, the Yuuzhan Vong were supposed to go on a voyage. Their galaxy had been left crippled, and so they went off to find a new home. They travelled in giant things known as world ships, or Corastrona, which were massive, sentient vessels, some almost as big as the first Death Star, and they sent these world ships through the void, which was a space between space, essentially the space between galaxies, and it was said that they travelled through the void for millennia, which is thousands of years. But the oldest known world ship that they had was 1,000 years old. It was considered ancient by world ship standards, and it was dying. However, if one of their scout ships had discovered the Star Wars galaxy 4,000 years before their stories actually occurred, why didn't they just act on the scout ship's knowledge? We know in the story that Candorus says the scout ship gets away. It goes back into the void where they think it's just going to get destroyed. And supposedly, the Yuuzhan Vong were just kind of aimlessly wandering in the void until they found a suitable galaxy. So why didn't they then go straight to this galaxy with all of the information that the Yorick Strona provided? Now I do know there are loopholes and there are ways to get around this, there are easy ways to just kind of write their way out of it, but I just find it a little bit silly that a scout ship that was purposely sent to this galaxy went back to the Yuuzhan Vong getting away from Candorus, and then they just kind of ignored all of their information about the new galaxy, especially the Mandalorians, and the Yuuzhan Vong didn't want to do anything about it until 4,000 years later. I don't know, that kind of confuses me a little bit. But then again, full clarification, like I said at the beginning of the video, post Return of the Jedi and Yuuzhan Vong lore isn't my strong suit, and there definitely could be little bits of information dotted throughout all of their stories that make this make sense, and these little bits of information will make those complications go away and make sense, and I'm sure that if I am wrong, there are many of you that will tell me in the comment section below, and feel free to do so. But with that said, I do actually want to know in the comment section whether or not you knew about this Yu Zanvong reference in Knights of the Old Republic. Because I have a lot of people asking me about it, and I certainly didn't get it when I first played the games. In fact, I didn't even clock it until a good few years ago. But anyway, you learn something new every day, right? As always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button, it helps me out a great deal. And if you haven't, perhaps consider subscribing to join the biggest growing Knights of the Old Republic community on YouTube. And with the KOTOR remake on the horizon, you definitely want to be a part of it. I'll see you guys in the next video. But until then, may the Force be with you. Always.